In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to Mass here at Notre Dame. We come with many prayers in our hearts, seeing a new conflict uh, developing in Europe. We come with our own broken hearts to ask for forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, <clears throat> all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. James. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, because the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth, or with any other oath, but let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no, that you may not incur condemnation. The word of the Lord. Be the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abundant in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful. Consecrate us in the truth. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came into the district of Judea and across the Jordan. Again crowds gathered around him, and as was his custom, again taught them. The Pharisees approached him and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes when we read the scriptures or we hear the scriptures proclaimed, we don't immediately see, immediately see the relevance of the scriptures. And I think this is not the case today. When we just read the first line of the letter of St. James, it says, Do not complain. You never heard anybody complaining, I imagine, right? And you never complained, right? Do not complain. What an incredibly wise word. We need to think about it. And also the reasons why this is taught to the very first generation of Christians. St. James was martyred very early here in Jerusalem. And already he was teaching the first disciples of Jesus, do not complain. Have you thought about complaining? About what it means, what it entails? And it's interesting, this is also very connected with the gospel. Have you ever heard about divorce? When I was a child, when I was your age, we didn't have divorce in Ireland. We didn't know divorced people. It was not on the horizon. We heard about some things in Hollywood and California, but it was not in our culture, it was not around. And it's interesting today, everybody knows people whose marriages have failed. It's not that marriages didn't have major difficulties back then, or maybe also very difficult situations, but we're in a time again that was prevalent at Jesus' time, and the people were thinking about, like, why did they ask Jesus, what do you think about divorce? If it was not an issue, if it was clear, they wouldn't ask him. And then they asked him, and he gave his answer. So this is very relevant. And I think the two themes are a little bit connected. To build relationships is not easy. It's a challenge for everybody. Relationships at work, relationships with friends at school. If you go to live in another place to build new relationships from scratch, 
that's always challenging. And then the point here about not complaining. This is very interesting. You know, maybe you could complain that you got very sick and you're in hospital. But while you're in hospital, you could also say, Lord, I thank you that there's a hospital, that there are so many nurses and doctors there to help me because many other people are sick and do not have this possibility. They don't have a hospital. They don't have trained nurses and doctors to look after them. So then this whole issue of complaining is very interesting. And sometimes complaining can be very arrogant, can be very intensive, can be very protesting, negative, bitter, it doesn't build anything. It doesn't improve anything. So, you know, when two people get married, obviously the statistics would tell us that mostly young people get married, young adults. They discover their partner for life and they build a relationship and they're blessed with children. My niece just had her first baby. I'm a granduncle. And you know, you think about that family and you say, gosh, you know, I pray that they will always be together, that they will be true good parents for their little daughter. But we see so many relationships in trouble. And Jesus said that the, from the beginning it was not so. They were, the natural love and that growth in the human being should be growth in every area, not just physically, not just intellectually, not just academically, but it should also be a growth in relationships. And then there are some problems in the world and in life, how do we deal with them? Or maybe we just push them under the carpet and we don't deal with them and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and then one day they explode. Can we become people who find the blessings who communicate the blessings, the joy of so many blessings. I happen to know personally a man who was paralyzed from here down. And he's still very paralyzed. And he is doing so much good in Germany. He is a Protestant man. And a couple of weeks ago in Magdala, or maybe it's two months ago now, I forget, time goes so fast, so many things happen there was an Ironman competition. An Ironman, you have to swim, I think, almost two kilometers in the Sea of Galilee. That's what they had to do. They had to run, I think it was eight or 10 kilometers and cycle 90 something kilometers. And this man, when he was eight years of age, his hand, he was in a fire accident because a teenager threw a can of gasoline into a fire and the fire came back. And he was eight years of age and another boy and the fire caught hold of his body. And his hand was welded to his body for three years. And he has gone through 42 operations. He's in his mid-40s, or early mid-40s. And he has participated in 42 Ironman competitions. It was in December, now I remember, because when he went back to Nashville, Tennessee, he had to have another operation, major operation, one of those 42 operations with skin grafts. It's an amazing story. So some people receive that grace or receive in the sense of positively receiving it because the grace is available for everybody. Now we have a new war. How many saints were made during wars? So many saints were made during wars. In the worst times, God's grace worked in their hearts to transform them. What a great occasion we have. What a great opportunity we have in every circumstance. And complaining is not the rush. We can't build relationships with complaining. Maybe you complain about a sibling, about a parent, about a child, about a neighbor, about your teacher, about your studies. Let's think of new about how to do this. And let's be people who bring out the blessing and build good relationships and create that culture in our world. Because God is a redemptive God.
Do not judge, do not complain, and you will not be judged. That's the motivation here. And then let's, not do, let's do it positively. Let's show God's redemption in the rough circumstances of life. And let's express blessings and gratitude over all complaints. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed, are, God. God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Adolfo Tito our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep <coughs> in the hope of their resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Amen.